Aloha and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Got Your Six podcast. This six-question podcast brings together high performers to share their methods, strategies, and ideas delivered in an informative and, most importantly, actionable way that will help you lead yourself and those around you from the battlefield to the boardroom. Coming to you every episode, I'm your host, Tony Nash. And into the breach. Nothing mentioned on this podcast is an endorsement or opinion of the Department of Defense. I got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. I got your six. Sixers, what an unbelievable treat we have today. Not only is our guest a veteran, an entrepreneur, a social media influencer, at Stern currently getting his MBA, a graduate of the University of California studying physics. I mean, I could go on for days about our guest. I, and he goes by many names, but you probably know him as one. He's West Point's favorite influencer, Sonny Sundere. How, Sonny, how are we doing, brother? Good. That's quite, a, that's quite an intro. It makes me sound a lot hey. more <laughs> impressive than I, I certainly feel that I am. I, what I love is a quote that um, I think I've seen flowing around. It's something along the lines of like, you're not as good. It's not about how good you are at something. It's about how good you are as you look doing it or something to that effect. I, I think I butchered it, but um, <laughs> it is very cool the way you approach comedy um, and give it more of a lightheartedness to sometimes the hardship that we have to endure in the military. So again, let me, while everyone's listening, thank you for doing that. Yeah, uh, thank you for and any anyone who listens who follows my content. Um, I certainly never expected it to blow up in the way that it has, or to be shared in the way it has, or for people to really reach out and say, you know, I I had you know four and a half years in, and I had one very specific experience. You know, I was only at one duty station, so it's pretty cool that my observations about my experiences with my specific command are actually not that unique and everyone has the has experienced similar things so that's kind of cool to see no absolutely and that's the, like that shared understanding uh whether you're in or out you can kind of resonate with uh with the military community and as you've kind of been out for a year now as you're going to school and learning you know getting your mba is there something that you constantly go back to from your time in the military that really resonates with you and you implement daily yeah, I think uh, there's a few things. I think the biggest one kind of related to like big picture stuff is, um, and I think it does depend on, I would say definitely people's experience in the military is very different. So what I took out of them, I, I don't really know if the military necessarily taught me anything, um, but it showed me a lot of like things, like it showed me a lot of experience. So I think it, if you decide to learn from that, you can, because plenty of people get out and um, don't necessarily maybe revert back to the way they were before. Um, but I think the big thing is I don't take things as seriously as I used to. So that's not to say I don't like try at things, but I think the military put a lot of things in perspective to me to not get stressed out over, I think before the military, certainly, I don't know, deadline approaching for an application for something, or um, maybe I, like I missed a fee on my, I don't know, like a, like a payment for something. Like it would stress me out a lot more before the military um, than I think it does now. And that's like a pretty cool thing. And then definitely the one thing that I do all the time, if I can, if I'm not like drinking or something the night before or going out, uh, uh, I live in New York city for those who don't know. So it's, uh, there's always something kind of fun to do, um, every night, but it's waking up early and doing cardio. I know that's like on one of those corner, like corny entrepreneur, like, you know, wake up at, 1 a.m. like you know read five books but seriously like the one thing the military does right i think if it even if it does a lot of things wrong is they set this time in the morning um to do cardio because the rest of the day can be shitty but if you do like i don't know if you just like control your morning as sort of you know as corny as that is because i know a lot of these like navy seal podcasts they're always just <laughs> talking about this but it's true and i and i think when i when i do apply that um it really works and i think before the military i never would have imagine like waking up early would have such a big difference in your day. But I think those are sort of the two big ones. Is there a recent uh, example you can give of like how you, by owning the day, it really just sets you on a trajectory, whether it was for that day or a week or going into the month where you were just kind of like cruising. 
Yeah, I think so. I don't know if there's a like. I don't know if there's like one specific recent example where, um, like something happened that was out of the ordinary. But certainly, whenever I do, if I just wake up, I have some time to myself in, in the morning, um, and I just like do a good long run. I mean, I don't enjoy running. Um, you know, even though I was like an officer and the stereotype is, I think some officers enjoy running. I don't, but I enjoy just like, I haven't met too many. <laughs> I enjoy just doing something that I can control. Cause in a weird way, I actually think, uh, the things in the day are easier to, uh, I don't know. It's just easier to approach things when you already kind of have a wind in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's like, sounds like one of those corny things, but if you just sort of, um, if you sort of start the day believing you're you're winning it's it's like a lot easier to just like and then when i do the opposite when i don't and it's not as extreme as if i don't run in that morning my day is like fucked you know yeah. but sorry can i <laughs> yeah, rip. Let, my day i talked about that okay uh yeah um it's not like my day is over but i certainly think that just building wins which is um and in the army, I saw the same thing too. If the day didn't start off with good PT, it started off with some terrible detail, and you know, all of a sudden something goes wrong, and it just feels like a terrible day. Where there's, where there's days in the army where it was long days, but I felt like really good at the end because it just felt like win to win to win. And I think it, you know, as as kind of dumb as it sounds, it just starts with uh, even if it's not running, just doing something in the morning that's like that's like your like thing completely and like you're not waking up like reacting to uh you know like like an undergrad for example i uh would wake up and go to class right away those you know just sort of like be still half asleep and now in business school the first semester i was actually resorted back to that i was just sort of out of the army i was like do what i want and then sort of the past two semesters i kind of have gone back to waking up early and it's just it makes such a difference like um, so go ahead. Uh, as you talk through like that habit stacking, I think that's so crucial because it's just that little bit of momentum initially early on that kind of puts you, it's almost like dominoes are falling and you're just in that first domino by getting up and then letting that momentum take down the rest of them as they come throughout the day. It, Cause you apply that to business as well. Cause like we talked about, not only are you a student, you're also an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I, I take a lot of L's, you know, in my, in my business, the best part about being an entrepreneur, I think is right before you start, you actually put your money out there because then you're a millionaire in your mind, you know, like every single plan that you set out is going to work. There's going to be no failures. Um, but the losses are not quite as bad if I just, I mean, cause running is just such a painful thing to do. Um, so if you just do that in the morning, um, almost by comparison, everything else in the day, you just, you feel good. You just, you know, just you're you're in a mode where you're more uh like like your body like kind of wants to win you know again as corny as that sounds yeah, whereas if you start off already yeah as, as whereas like so if you encounter something hard you're like all right let's figure this out as opposed to if i just wake up and if i'm like hung over and i drag myself to class and i don't know what's going on in the lecture because i didn't prepare then all of a sudden it just starts building this negative um and so yeah, yeah as much as you know it's I don't know. For me, I'm not one of those people that can, uh, I just like creating like a good system um, as opposed to, I'm not like, I don't have the ability to willpower my way through like everything. So it's, it's easier to take some of that like stress off and just set like a routine for myself. So as you look at your system, right, um, you're constantly kind of tinkering with it to make it most efficient for where you are in life. What are you adding to the system right now? say something you're working on or like a, a talent or a skill set that you're trying to acquire uh, that you're working into your system as we speak. Yeah. So I don't know if this, I was so, I, I was sort of thinking about this before, before the podcast, cause I, I saw some of the, you know, the, the uh, maybe the topics we discussed, but um, I think the the hardest thing about getting out of the, of the army is that there's no, especially for anyone starting their own business who's thinking about it by no means am I someone who's figured it out. So I can only say what not to do. I certainly don't know like what to do, um, which I think is a pretty honest uh, (laughs) business approach, I think. But the thing with business is like, um, and and I'm sure you experienced this with your podcast as well Is I, there's no like 
there's no one telling you you do the these three things like say you're getting your eib or like ranger tab or something even though those things could be hard um they tell you what to do and if you do do them pretty well you're going to pass whereas sort of doing your own business or whatever it is like the not only is like the destination kind of vague like what you need to do is also kind of vague so it's it's harder to set a goal. Like if I set a goal, like I need to make this much money or I need to do this and something will happen that goes wrong inevitably. And then I get frustrated because now all of a sudden, um, you know, maybe I didn't meet, meet the amount I wanted to make, or I didn't get the views I wanted. Um, and I sort of had to have to like reframe everything. Cause in the army, like, again, like you're given like more clear, if you do do this, this will happen. Um, and now I think I have to focus more on just like, I'm going to do, I'm just going to get better, like just a little bit better at doing the work I did yesterday. Because otherwise if I think about like, okay, by the end of the week, like, like how much, I, how much I get, like how much money I get is like kind of out of my control. If that makes yeah, sense. Like absolutely. at the end of the day, like I can kind of influence like, okay, maybe if my ads are shitty or um, I'm not putting out. Like, I don't know, something about my videos off or the advertising is not messaging correctly to the right audience. I can kind of control those things, but ultimately like I don't have any control over whether someone buys something or whether someone offers me a promotion or something like that. And so that's been quite difficult because it's, I think kind of, at least in the army nature, it's like, all right, what's your next target? Um, whereas it's you, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but you almost have to be like, okay, I'm creating whatever it is. Like I'm creating this video and my goal can't be this video needs to get 2000 views. Like you can kind of use that maybe as feedback, but that can't be like, that can't be like the metric for your to satisfaction. Define, yeah. Otherwise like, yeah, otherwise it's terrible. You start like, you're like, cause sometimes it's just so random. And if that becomes your metric, then you start to get depressed. You're like, maybe nobody likes this content. I'm not funny. That starts to affect you. Whereas it has to be like, okay, was this video, do I think this video is better than the last video? And um, that's something that's like quite, I think a little bit of a mindset change from um, uh, at least my army goals a little bit. So, Yeah. Instead of focusing, like we focus on the outcome of the mission, you're focusing again, as we've kind of talked about on the system, right? Are you continually, consistently showing up? Are you con doing that work that you talked about, you know, day, as the days go on? to be able to be in a position when it does take off or it goes in a direction that leads to growth. Are you, have you done enough work to be prepared for that moment? Yeah, exactly. And it's way easier said than done. I, by no means am I perfect in this. Sometimes I will like back of my mind's like, we want, we want this goal. We need to get this much by this time or whatever. And it's just, I don't know. It's a very dangerous path because, um, since I'm setting my own steps, it's not like, again, it's not like EIB where it's like, okay, if you do, you know, um, I guess for those that I'm sure everyone probably knows, but expert infantryman badge, for example, this is a set of very specific tasks. You do them in a very specific way. And if you do them the right way, you will get a go, you know, and if you don't do them, you'll get a no go. Um, and now doing your own business, you kind of have to, yeah, you can kind of look at what other people have done, but you kind of almost have to implement your own steps. A lot of times it's like going 10 steps that way, five steps backwards. And yeah, if you just focus on the outcome, it becomes very depressing. And that's what I did sort of like the first half of Stern was get caught up in that. And then what you end up doing is just chasing results and you, uh, it's just not a good, it's not a good recipe for, for a success, I think. Right. Running a race like we were talking about that you don't care about winning. Yeah, exactly. How, how do you inject empathy into that so you're not constantly beating yourself up for maybe not taking the right step initially, but in the long term, it ends up being the right move? Yeah, that's hard, man. I'll be honest, because I think coming from like my background's the infantry and like in a weird way, sometimes I think I still respond to uh, like like if someone were to say like, hey, Sonny, like you know, you're just, you're doing all the right things. Like you just got to keep doing you champ. Like, I, I don't know if that would like stir me up as someone being like, you really think like you can succeed. You really think you're putting that much, like somehow that would fire me up more. So I think I do that to myself. And um, again, since I'm out, I can kind of say these things that are a bit like softer, you know, maybe I think when I was in, I wouldn't really have bought into this stuff, but I, I heard this thing recently that was like, 
you know, when you're training someone else, you're probably not going to just keep beating them over and over again. Like if you're training like a dog or something, like you can't, sometimes you got to punish the dog a little bit, but you can't like actually be like, otherwise the dog's not going to perform. I think like the, the quote was something like, or whoever's saying is like, if you wouldn't do that to someone else, like you shouldn't do that to yourself. And that sounds like some, you know, soft, like flowery so-and-so, but I, I think it's true. Cause like, I think about when I try to motivate some of my guys or really how my NCOs motivated them, there'd be a little bit of punishment, but a lot of it was they did, you know, they didn't just like beat them into complete. I think for some reason we have a tendency to do that to ourselves. It's just like, you're pathetic, you know, you're, a, <laughs> you're, you know, and it's, I don't know why we do it, but I certainly think it's not helpful. And that's, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, it's just like a combat arms sort of, yeah. um, and maybe it works to some degree in the army. Maybe it doesn't. We just think it works. Um, but I, I certainly think that's like a leftover thing from the army that I'm trying to work on because it's certainly, it doesn't help to just like fail at something and be like, you're worth, you know, I'm just a worthless. It doesn't, <laughs> you know, um, at the same time, I don't want to be one of those people that's like everything, you know, they don't put in a lot of work and they just say like, well, it's the way everything just has a certain way. Like yeah, or or wait for Mercury everything just kind of the Gatorade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, they're just kind of those people that are just like, well, everything has a, a plan and it's like, dude, like you're not doing, you're just letting life like, you know, so and there's some balance in between the two and uh, that's kind of hard to nail, but you're certainly on point there. Where is, where is that balance for you or that equilibrium or harmony, whatever you want to call it? Where does that exist? Where you are, tough on yourself to like continue to strive to be better but also not so tough where you're literally kicking your shit in yeah i i'm not sure i'm not sure i found it i think what definitely helps is hanging out with like-minded people um so i have a friend in new york who i met through um this marine i'll plug them pb abate it's a marine veteran um like patrol base abate named after the sniper Abate was K in Afghanistan, but they, they had a uh, meetup group in New York. Uh, like a, Tom's a friend of the uh, show. They're, they're like main meetup. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, their main thing is in Montana, but like they had a New York uh, event that was like skeet shooting. It was like the best therapy I think I've had. Uh, I'm not like a big gun guy or anything, but just, I think it was the first time it was in February. So was, I'd been out almost a year and just like shooting with a bunch of guys and like, we're kind of talking about our military experience, but just kind of talking about New York because everyone's from New York there. Um, and one of the guys I met there runs his own business in New York. He's a former Marine. And just being around someone like that, I think kind of takes you out of your own head. Um, yeah. So I guess to answer your question, I don't think personally I've found a perfect balance, but I think what's good is to hang around people who are uh, sort of like-minded so you can kind of like recalibrate yourself. Because otherwise, if you're just like being the worst thing, you could do is just like be by yourself and just let your thoughts like, you know, spiral into some weird, like, you know, then you, then you, then you speak with your friend and then suddenly you look back on those thoughts and you're like, geez, like, why am I, you know, why am I thinking like that? Like, that's kind of weird, you know? So it, it kind of just like breaks you out of that loop. So that's yeah. sort of my solution. No, that makes sense too. Cause like when you're going through hardship, right. Think back to the times in the military when it's like just you, you're like, this really sucks. But when you're around other people, like whether you're in ranger school, doing EIB, deployed, like in shitty situations, you can look to your battle buddy on your left and right and be like, yeah, this sucks, but like we're in this together uh, and we're going to see it through. So it's that like camaraderie that you can build uh, that allows you to continue to go forward. And that's a beautiful way of saying it. No, exactly. And and that's kind of where my comedy came from um, was, so I had to put Iraq 2019, mostly uneventful deployment we had the iranian missile shot at our unit which sounds way more epic they made like a 60 that. minutes documentary on it which yeah. it was funny because at the time we kind of just remembered this whole thing is like and then after they actually fired the missiles we thought it was kind of like bs like there's no way iran like they're a real you know that's like a that's like a you know that's like a un country like there's no way um and then they fired the missiles and i thought we were going to go to like world war three and nothing happened um and covid covid actually happened shortly after so i don't know if that maybe uh stop things but other than that it was mostly uneventful deployment so there's a lot of like you know how the army is when there's sometimes not a lot going on they'll create things and um some of that like bs and 
like random things um like my platoon star and i would just like make jokes and observations on just like how absurd some of the things were and he was very like sarcastic guy so that's sort of that was sort of like the the origin of just i think being observant about like just the funny things going around me so um that certainly also led to my comedy as well and and once you started creating did you just kind of start to see opportunity and like inspiration everywhere or did it take some time? Yeah. So I, I, uh, you know, I always, I, so I created video in terms of like creating videos. I used to create videos in high school just for fun, like with my friends. So that editing skill, I didn't really do anything in college, but that like edit editing and just maybe like a generic eye for just storytelling was kind of there from high school a little bit. Um, like I took some film classes and stuff in high school. Uh, and yeah, I just, I had my GoPro in Iraq, I'd just make like small movies, show my guys. And when I got back from Iraq, I'd make like Alaska. That's just, like sort of where Zubir came about, started making Alaska adventure videos. And I just remember all the jokes I'd made with my platoon sergeant. And um, we had like a, we would not like reenact skits. Like he was too cool to do that, you know, but like he, we would kind of talk out what would be like a script, just like funny, like, I don't know, commander would come in and say something dumb and we would think of a different scenario in which like we would have looked cooler than the commander um, or basically cause he's just like, you know, we didn't respect him or um, I don't know, just silly things like that. So I kind of had it in my back, like in the back of my mind. And when I got out, I like made a few or posted them to YouTube and they didn't really get that many views. Um, my friends thought they were funny. And then on, on one of my friends from the army still in suggested like, Hey, like TikTok's like really blowing up. Should throw a video on there. And I just threw like one video on there. got like 50,000 views overnight. And then, so from there, kind of seeing the feedback, it just um, became more exciting to like, think about like, oh, I remember this happened, this happened. And, and so it just kind of came, came naturally, I think. Yeah. And I, and I think a lot of people appreciate, like, this was a slow build, right? Like you were doing film school, you were talking about it. And then once you started creating, you'd already kind of done the work. So then when you did see success, you were able to be like, well, I guess we're going to keep doing this. And I'm, I'm familiar kind of enough to keep making these videos. Yeah, exactly. Um, I really like creating the videos. I know, um, you know, I, I don't know if, you know, I don't, again, wake up, like right when I got out, it was kind of thrilling to say the things I wish I could have said when I was in. Now that thrill, I don't think it's quite there because I'm, you know, I'm out. I have a, like a, a different life now, but I love, I just love coming up with an idea in my head putting it out there and for people to feel the same way that like basically I, I wanted them to feel when I made it, which was poking fun at, you know, um, you know, whatever. Sometimes I'll put like a civilian observation, but I'll wrap it up in like a related military thing just because I know that's for better or worse. That's the brand now. I never like planned it out. Like I'm going to make a military page. I would maybe like to, at some point to make more generic comedy. Um, but yeah, I just, the the groundwork in terms of editing was there from like uh, and by no means am I expert editor or expert filmer but I had some experience there already and then this started I don't know I just videos started popping off and I just like creating them so oh, that's awesome and then with the humor though a lot of, you know a lot of comedians will say yeah. in the humor there's pain where has where has failure ultimately allowed you to greatly succeed like leveraging that pain into success. Um, yeah, so I guess, um, I, I don't know, you know, I, I think there was no, as far as I can think, there was no big failure and this isn't to be arrogant, like, um, cause I had a lot of mini failures in the army, but then I, I think I bounced back right after. Um, so I also didn't come into the army with any expectations. Like I was college grad was not ROTC or West Point. I did OCS. So I just knew I wanted something really different for my physics. So I would say that was sort of like a failure. Like I really wanted to be a physicist. And then by junior year, I sort of had the realization, like, you know, if I put in the work, like just an extreme amount of work, I was able to compete with my, some of like my really brilliant classmates. But at the end of the day, it was sort of like a hard thing to be like, man, like physics is not for me in the way I thought, um, I thought maybe it originally was. 
And so I came into the army with like just complete, I just knew I wanted to be combat arms. I didn't even know I wanted to be infantry. Um, that was like a sort of a last minute decision at OCS. So it was all like mini failures in terms of um, yeah. like maybe not thinking I was going to succeed or graduate ranger school. I recycled every phase of ranger school. So <laughs> in the winter as well. Um, hey, nothing wrong but with ultimate, it with white. Yeah. In the same way, yeah, man. exactly. Um, and then even getting a second platoon. Um, so I was a regular rifle platoon. I didn't even plan anything out. I wasn't like, I'm going to be a rifle platoon. And then XO, I was just, I'm a rifle platoon leader. And then it was sort of like, you know, time's up for your one year as a platoon leader. And I really didn't want to be an XO. Like I, I was an XO for like, for like a month. I hated it so much. Um, and um, in some weird way that maybe because I was bad at that job, I don't know. But my BC was like, how does mortar platoon sound? And I said, that's amazing. Um, so I, I don't know if there's any particular thing that I really wanted that I didn't get only because I didn't really plan anything. I just sort of like, you know, I just sort of showed up if there was something that seemed like a, you know, a good opportunity. I, I took it. I think, um, certainly just those mini failures though, like doing ranger school over and over again. I think I just got like, um, and then just, you know, the deployment, you know, for what it was, even just seeing some of the dumb things. I think that helps with my comedy because I got to see, um, it sort of made me more cynical. Um, and, you know, especially like say with Ranger School, for example, there's this idea before you go to the school that someone who makes it straight through is somehow better. And I just saw, I saw guys that were really good that went straight through and they would probably go straight through maybe every single time. Um, but those guys were very rare. And then, there were guys that were complete morons <laughs> who go straight through. There was guys that were really good that would recycle. Like I have a friend that won best ranger. Um, he's not really a close friend, but uh, we're friends at least in ranger school. Um, I still credit my go in, in mountains to him, but we recycled mountains together, you know, and this dude won best ranger later. So I think just seeing how those little failures didn't really like define a leader. Um, like just cause someone's a 300 PT score, uh you know has a good haircut like is good at paperwork and that doesn't mean he's like a good person so yeah. um i guess to answer your question there wasn't one big failure but just a lot of little things i observed kind of goes into my comedy a little bit yeah and as you look at holistically and we kind of wrap up so you talked about you know overcoming adversity and like becoming more resilient through those mini failures um and also just being aware of your situation or uh, surroundings and understanding that. So Sunday, Sunday race, Sunday, how are you better today than yesterday? Oh man. Um, I really think, um, as long as you just pick one. So if, like, I just try to pick one thing that I'm, um, you know, just one, like the smallest thing that, you know, I can improve on. So for me, coming from the army, like infantry for me, like if I can just improve. So I like I'm running most mornings now um, and I'm still lifting. So if I like improve at least like one thing in my lift or one thing, in my run in a weird way, I feel like that translates to, because the business stuff is like so chaotic sometimes to control that. Um, as long as I'm improving something physical fitness wise, and I'm making sure that. Um, so for example, today I looked at my, like once in a while, I'll like, stop just take a look at my skits see like the trajectory they're going and just make sure i'm not you know going in a direction i don't want to to go so i, I did that today and um i, th I think that's a good thing because i don't want to lose you can kind of get i think carried away sometimes when you have an audience like um one thing i certainly never want to do is is tell people uh how to live their lives i think some some people when they get big enough they feel very authoritative on this is the way everything should be. I never want to, I don't feel like I know that much, but, and I, and I think as long as I improve, I don't know, I get comments saying, which makes me feel pretty good that my content cheers them up, um, other veterans. So I think to me, if that does its job well, um, and I don't know, makes a veteran feel, I don't know, make someone laugh. I think that's something that, would make me feel good or better every day. So, 
See, speaking of which, where can people go to get the positive sunny vibes? Where are they going? Where where are they looking up on <laughs> Dr. Google? Yeah, so I guess uh, at uh, Sunny Actual, so Sunny, like Sun, S-U-N-N-Y underscore actual, which I only, the actual only came because I wanted it to be like, it's sunny or it's only sunny. Something that's kind of like fun and just lighthearted and it was all taken. And so I thought like, well, I'm the only, <laughs> I'm the only sunny. So, <laughs> I mean, because like, you know, when you're a platoon leader on the radio, sometimes yeah. you'll just be like, this isn't the RTO, this is six actual. So. um uh, I don't know. It just sort of naturally, <laughs> I didn't think about it too hard. So yeah, at Sunny Actual, both on Instagram, TikTok, my links to my brand Zuvir are on both pages uh, if you want to support that. Um, and then, yeah, my personal Instagram as well, which is has almost no veteran stuff. Um, and so I sort of have like three, I have my personal like Sunny, there's the Sunny like co- like military comedy stuff and then there's Zuvir and to me, they're a little bit like separate, but. Absolutely. And we'll make sure we link all those uh, in the show notes for this episode. Sonny, we can't thank you enough for sharing your strategies, your methods, your tactics, and most importantly, your man. Thanks for having our six. Really appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, this has been an honor um, to just have someone value my my opinion. I'm just sort of a comedian online. I hope anyone listening learned something or. Um, maybe learns what not to do. Um, and for anyone listening that watches my content, thank you so much. Um, means a lot. I don't know what you've been told Sixers, but the lawyers would like us to remind you that the views, opinions, and comments expressed on the gotcha six podcast are solely those of the hosts or guests to include current and previous department of defense employees and should in no way be considered the opinions of or endorsements on behalf of the Department of Defense or any of its components, divisions, contractors, or other current and previous staff members.